1990, there were 19.8 million immigrants living in the United States. In 2012, there were 40.7 million immigrants in the United States. That means that the number of immigrants living in the U.S. doubled over 22 years. Most of these immigrants came to our country in the hopes of achieving the American dream. However, this idea has been highly overrated. Ever since their arrival in the U.S., immigrants have been treated unfairly. In fact, it has not been uncommon for them to face cruel discrimination. After the attack on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, several immigrants were targeted as suspects for no clear reason. They were locked up and deported with no access to attorneys. Statistics prove that immigrants are mo more likely to experience workplace discrimination, domestic violence, and assault. This is not just a problem in the United States. Immigrants all over the world have been treated in the same terrible way. It is time to recognize the problem and focus on fixing it for good. In the Dominican Republic, there's a group of 800,000 Haitians made up of legal and undocumented immigrants and their descendants. 14,700 of these people were deported in 2003 alone. In 2004, 15,464 of them were deported. And in 2005, 20,811 people faced the same fate. People of Haitian descent and the Dominican were denied birth certificates and identity cards. This made it impossible for them to get respectable jobs and college education. Award-winning human rights activist Sonia Pierre was a Dominican of Haitian ancestry who fought for her people. At age 13, she led a march demanding rights for sugar camp plantation workers. She was arrested and threatened to be deported. The threat made international news. It was never actually carried out. Pierre soon after formed the Movement of Dominican Women of Haitian Ancestry, or MUDHA, and served as the director for 20 years. She died on December 4, 2011, from a heart attack at age 48. MUDHA works to promote empowerment and to defend the rights of women and families in the Dominican Haitian community. It pushes for labor rights, health care, and legal education. Immigrants in the United States are fighting the same battle that Haitians are in the Dominican Republic. Librada Paz, another award-winning human rights defender, experienced injustices towards hardworking immigrants in the U.S. At age 15, Paz left her home in the Miztec community of Mexico and moved to the United States. She hoped to achieve her dream of engineering. Instead, she found herself working on a farm, picking fruits and vegetables. For 10 years, she worked 10 hours a day for seven days a week. It was the only job she could find as an immigrant. Her dignity was ignored. She was abused and vulnerable, but she couldn't complain because she needed her job to survive and had no protection against unemployment. Plus, police were more likely to favor her employer's side of the story than her own. Currently, Paz lives in New York as a council member for the Rural and Migrant Ministry, or RMM, which works to educate immigrant farm workers. She is also a member of Alianza Campesina, a national women's farm worker movement. Her work is centered around making sure immigrant and citizen farm workers are provided with all the rights granted to them by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article 23 of the document grants everyone the rights to work, to free choice of employment, to just and favorable conditions of work, and to protection against unemployment. Paz has dedicated her life to making sure all people are endowed with these rights. Like Sonia Pierre, Librada Paz won the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award in 2012. The courageous struggles of these two women can teach us all very important lessons. It is important to recognize the wrong in the world. It is important to speak out against what is wrong and stand up for what is right, despite the consequences. It is important to persevere. Those who give up too soon will never achieve their dreams or accomplish their goals. It is important to believe in yourself. Now that our community, the town of Skinny Atlas, is aware of this issue, we have decided to help. 
we set up a fundraiser in an attempt to get students to donate to the cause. Students, parents, and teachers bought raffle tickets and we raised a total of $274. All of the money will be sent to the Rural and Migrant Ministry. We are trying to make a difference in the world. We believe.